Hi there, welcome to TDCAT Tech. Today I'm looking at this, it's the Sony ICD-UX570. Yes, believe it or not, this is a dictaphone. Who knew those these things still existed? Well, they do. I mean, this was released in 2019, so this is less than a year old. I think it was September 2019 this product was first released. So these are still being made. Uh, and I, I just like this kind of thing. I just love kind of just things that are made to do a particular thing, and I would like to see how well they do them. But before I get into the unboxing, which is what this video is about, if you're after a sound quality test, uh, I will be doing that on a separate video. So um, if I've done it, I'll try and put a card up in the uh, top right hand corner here of the screen. But um, for now, I, I just want to quickly go over a couple of reasons, and I could only find a couple, a couple of reasons why I think you might, why you would want to use a dictaphone rather than just using a mobile phone. Okay, well, the first reason, of course, is you might not have a phone, but realistically, if you're in the kind of position or uh, where you're gonna, you know, where you're gonna wanna be using one of these, the chances are, I would say, I don't think I'm jumping, sort of making too many, uh, jumping to too many conclusions there by saying that um, I think you would probably have a smartphone of some description, but maybe not, you know, and, uh, the second reason I could come up with, and there aren't many of these, as I say, is that uh, it's possibly better quality, though I'm not convinced of that because a mobile phone, the recording on the uh, internal mics on a mobile phone is particularly good. I mean, it's, it's absolutely fine compared to what this, I mean, this is about intelligibility, this. It's not about premium, you know, high sort of bit rate and amazing sort of quality audio recording. This is about being able to understand what's being said. Easier to use, I suppose the, I suppose that you might, you might get a bit more dedicated functionality in something like this, but in reality, again, you could probably put that into software, couldn't you? So if you've got a decent app, a decent recording app on a phone, then you can probably do the same thing. Uh, but the main one, without a doubt, is that this is a dedicated tool to do a job. And you cannot get over how important that might be. I know for a fact that if I was sat in a meeting and I wanted to record it, I would much prefer to be recording it on something like this because I would not want to tie up my phone doing recording for like an hour or two hours while a meeting went on. And of course you could still potentially play around with your phone, but you might have incoming calls on your phone. You might have incoming message on your phone. There's stuff going on on your phone all the time. So these retail at about 129 pounds. They're not cheap, this particular model. There is the uh, UX575 as well. But uh, the only difference I think with that is that it's 16 gig internal storage rather than uh, four gig internal storage. But you can upgrade the internal, you can upgrade the uh, storage with a micro SD card. So you can install an, an XC card and put, do over 64 gig of internal storage on this device anyway. So what's the problem? You just need to invest in an, an XD card then. But yeah, so the retail price on these is 129 pound. I picked this up on Amazon for 83 pound. So you do not have to pay 129 pounds for these things. So there's the device. Very small, very light. I'll take a look at that in a moment. In a bit, bit more closer up, I'll get my camera zoomed in. Uh, but what else do you get in here? I wouldn't have thought you'd get much. Maybe a USB. No, oh, actually, no, the USB is just attaches, doesn't it? So, well, there's nothing else, just documentation. <laughs> there we are. So just a bunch of help files, and you do get this little pouch to put it in. Again, I've said it in previous videos, I hate these things, this, whatever this is, some sort of neoprene sort of, ugh, <laughs> horrible. No need for them at all. You know, just stick this in your pocket. So let's get, get in close and take a look at this. I'm gonna remove the label from the front here. And I'll show you this in a bit of detail. Let's get in nice and close. So there we have it. There's the uh, there's the device. It's, it's a tidy little thing. I, I mean, you've got to admire Sony design. They still, I mean, they always used to make amazing products back in kind of the 80s and 90s. And uh, 
but their design has always been a beautiful sort of just very minimal and very kind of clean looking. I mean, that's it's, it's lovely, isn't it? So yeah, you st um, stop and record, simple record button there and all your navigation stuff. And they just have dedicated sort of plus, plus 10 seconds, minus three seconds, easy search there. And I don't know whether that just jumps, jumps a track or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, track marker there. And then on the top we have uh, oh yeah, the other thing you get with this, of course, is you get a microphone input and a headphone output, which you don't get on so many phones now, of course. Uh, you would never get a microphone in, so you could use a lav mic on this and plug it, just, you know, plug it into the um, microphone in, the red one there, and uh, then you've got potentially a much more, a much neater solution. And then we have our power button and hold volume up and down, USB thing, so the USB just flicks out the bottom like that. And that's how you charge it, nice and easy. And I think it does something like 22 hours of record time on one charge and I think 47 hours of listening time if you use the headphones and about, I don't know, 20 or something if you're, just, if you're listening on the actual device. But that's, that's really nice, nice little, yeah. Very nice, uh, nice build quality. It's very, very light, very lightweight. And uh, then in the side here, this is where you would put your additional storage if you want to, your micro USD card in there. And that's all there is to it. So let's get it powered up. Uh, if presuming, so presumably there's some charge in here. Configure initial settings. Enter English, yes. Date, okay, I'll just do this. I'll get back to you. So there we go, time and date set. And uh, battery life there is clearly displayed, so let's just uh, record a little section now. I assume... There we go. It says it's auto level, uh, which to me is actually a bad thing. I would prefer to have the option of manual level control. I don't know if you do or not, but um, auto level control clearly makes sense from a true dictaphone point of view, you know, if, if that's what you're wanting it for auto level makes the most sense and um, there would be no reason to have anything else on it. But uh, there you go, you can see recording this nicely and display goes off there after 30 seconds, it did mention that. So I'm guessing if the display's gone off, can I just, just stop, actually stop it? Or does it just bring the display on? No, it stops it, okay. Yeah, right, fine. So can I play that back now? Level control. I clearly makes sense from there we a are. true dictaphone point of view. You know, if, if that's what you're wanting it for, auto level makes the most sense. And one thing I think that's important for people with this type of stuff, and this is one thing that is, it definitely gives this type of device the edge, is how quickly you can be up and running. So I'm going to turn this off now. And uh, there we go. So. That's power off. And what I want to be able to do is just see how long it'll take for me to start this up and start recording. So can I do it first of all by just pressing the record button without the hold being on? No, can I press and hold record? No, right, so I have to do it via the power button. So I have to first of all just power it up, do that now, and record. There we go, straight away. I'm recording. There is like no no lag there at all. That's really fast. That's faster than I was expecting it to be. Uh, really good that. Because even with Face ID on a phone, you, you know, it still takes a few seconds. And if you haven't got if you've got gloves on or something like that, there's just always a time when having a dedicated device like this, a tiny little thing, just in your top pocket or something, is going to be easier than using a phone. The only benefit, of course, that will always have a phone winning on everything is the fact that it's generally always with you. So I figured that this video probably would be a little bit more useful if I did familiarize myself with the main functions, at least on this, uh, on this unit. So that's what I've done. And um, I've had a quick look through it and hopefully will, this section will give you some idea 
of uh, exactly what this device can do and we'll go through the menus and look in some detail at those. So uh, this video might take a little while but um, stick with me. Uh, some good stuff on this. It's a nice simple simple-ish to use. It's kind of got certain traits of the Sony uh, menu systems where they're just not that user friendly but, uh, but generally it's good. So this is the kind of main screen here and uh, you can go through your recorded files, your music um, or into settings or back to record. So the main section of course is the record section. Just enter into there or you can get straight to here just by pressing record. And um, if you're in this section the options that you're given under option are the record settings. So if I go back now and go into settings itself, uh, there it is, then I now am given three different settings. I'm giving my record settings, playback settings and common settings. So let's start with common settings first. And uh, there we have the option to turn this um, tally sort of LED on, which tells it whether or not you're playing back or whether you're recording or not. So you can see clearly, even though the screen's gone off, you can see clearly the device is still recording. Screen off timer gives you options there to have the screen on continuously if you want. I've got it set to one minute. The beep, which is sort of annoying after a while, you can turn that off if you want. Language, I've got that set to English, but loads of different languages on there. So set that to um, whatever you want. Date and time settings, sleep timer, well, just exactly as it says really. Auto power off, so the device can turn off after just 10 minutes if you're not doing anything with it. Handy, of course, to save power, but you can turn that off again if you want to. I've got it set yep, to 10 minutes there. And uh, resetting or formatting of the device, and then you've got information on the available record time. So the configuration I've got mine set to at the moment, the built-in memory has 5 hours 31 minutes remaining of record time, but I don't have a micro SD card in, so you can see I've got nothing on there. And, uh, and then information about the firmware on the device. Uh, so let's go back and look at the record settings. Uh, first of all, we have an option of which recording folder we want to use, uh, whether we want to use it on the SD card or the built-in memory, and then you can choose the folder. I've only got the default one set at the moment, so I'm just using folder one. Uh, we can create a folder on either the built-in memory or the SD card. It looks like they are fairly preset in their names. I don't think you can type your own name in. I don't get the impression you can anyway. Um, no, you just got standard, fairly standard stuff here. But that's all right. As long as they've got kind of incrementing numbers and things at the end of them, then that's no problem. Uh, so back on there and back on there. Uh, then we have our scene select. And scene select is really useful because scene select is essentially just a bunch of preset settings. So if you select various kind of record modes, built-in sensitivities, all that type of stuff, you can preset those uh, or it does come with a few presets. So you can only choose two presets of your own, but in general, so I've got mine set to my scene one, but by default, you can set turn it off entirely. And, uh, and that's cool, that's good, um, if, if that's what you choose to do. But uh, auto voice record, what this does, for example, is set, sets everything to auto level, and uh, that means it turns on the automatic gain control, and um, it's just ideally set for recording voice in any general voice scenario, I suppose. And then you've got auto music record. Again, not too sure about the differences between all these. Meeting, I tried this, it sounds awful. I'm not too sure what the point of that is. Uh, lecture, voice notes, interview. Uh, voice notes, by the way, a typical thing it does here is set the gay record gain to very low because you don't need it high if you're um, holding this right up to your mouth so you don't get any kind of background noise. You don't get that pumping of the auto gain control coming up. It just sets it really low and you can pick up your voice nice and easily just kind of close up on the device. And then interview, soft music, loud music, and then you've got the two preset scenes. So if you set everything up in the device as you want it, you go to your scene and then you can just say copy current settings and it just copies the device settings as they are currently are into that scene. So that's what mine's set to because I have mine record mode, for example, set to 
44.1 WAV 16-bit rather than using one of the MP3 files. Not too bothered about time on this, but having, a, having it record uncompressed is a nice feature, I think. Built-in mic sensitivity, well, you either choose for voice or for music, but then once you select one of those, you can turn off the auto gain control. So this is auto, or we can have it set to high, medium, or low. Uh, so yes, unlike what I said previously, you can turn off the auto gain control on this, and that's brilliant. Um, from what I can tell, anyway, it works. Uh, I was listening, doing some monitoring, because uh, another, another thing to point out, if you put headphones in here, you can monitor your voice so you can hear what's going into the microphones which again is nice I didn't expect that feature at all and also it seems that the microphone in can also be an audio in it can also be a line level in too not not 100% certain on that I haven't tested it but it seemed that way when I plugged something in it gave me my options straight away and it said mic or audio in so great um, so yeah high medium or low not too much choice there around level but certainly nice to have the option not to just have auto on there Focused and wide, well, this is kind of um, where whether you want your um, sort of uh, polar pattern to be uh, like like a shotgun mic, essentially. So in that case, it would be focused, i.e. pick up only from the direction of the mics themselves, or whether you just want it to be omnidirectional. And uh, you can only have that set when you don't have it on auto level. You have to have it on, on a fixed level to use that feature. External input setting, well, I can't show you that because I don't have anything plugged into it at the moment, but then it would just be sensitivity settings really for whatever mic you're plugging into it. Recording filter, there you can have a noise cut or a low cut filter. So if you have a low cut filter on, for example, uh, you can drop any really low frequencies, which cuts out loads of wind noise and things like that. So it might say cut everything below 120 hertz or off or something. And, uh, and that makes it makes uh, voice in wind much more intelligible, makes it much, much more easier to understand. And so we've got that set to off for the moment. Uh, cross memory record allows you to record to both the internal memory and the micro SD. So you have a backup of everything you record, nice feature. And voice operated recording, which is standard stuff on a dictaphone, it starts recording when it hears some input. Sync record. Now, I don't know what this is. I haven't looked this one up and I haven't managed to test it. It's just an on-off. I don't know what sync record is, so sorry about that. And um, auto track marks. It uh, places in track markers. It put places in the track markers throughout the file as it sees fit, as it thinks is uh, is relevant. So presumably when you know audio starts again or something. So maybe if there's a quiet bit and then audio starts again, it'll put another track marker in. And they, they are the recording settings. So let's go now to the playback settings. And then we have options for clear voice. Now, this clear voice is something that is, it's a Sony thing. I don't really know what the difference is between them. Clear voice one, clear voice two. We've got it turned off at the moment, but this is really just for playback. So when you play back again, you can normalize everything as you're playing it back to give you a more consistent level of output on the, on the file while you're playing it. You can have a, you can change the equalizer as well. So when you're playing stuff back, you can change how uh, how it, how it sounds in your headphones. It does sound great on the headphones. After having tried this uh, briefly, and then play mode again, just repeating, shuffling, shuffling. I'm not quite sure why you would shuffle a dictaphone, but uh, but you can do it. It's the options there anyway. And again, another one I'm not too sure on playback range, uh, all the whole range or selected range. Yeah, I don't know. Not absolutely sure what that's to do with. But um, yeah, so they're the playback settings. And if you go onto the main section here and you press and hold record, it goes into record pause. So you don't actually have to start recording straight away. And then equally, you have a couple of extra options that you can get to while you're recording. So these are things you can change while you're actually recording. If you need to change the sensitivity of the mic, you know, so if you're on auto, and whatever, you can change it off auto while it's actually recording. At least I think you can. Let me just try that while we're recording here. Okay, there we go. So that's the levels at the moment. It does tend to start off a little bit high. So if you are doing anything, it's sometimes good to maybe just sort of talk into it for a few seconds. First, let the auto gain control get its level because you can see it's dropped down there quite considerably compared to where it was when I started recording. But let's now see if I can get to those options while I'm recording here. Yeah. So built-in mic sensitivity. And I'm going to change this to, uh, I can't monitor it while I'm doing this, but let's just change it to low. 
and then we can see that the levels have dropped and if we go back into options and go into built mic, mic sensitivity and set this to high I'm hoping yeah oh gosh yeah you can see there that that's <laughs> probably distorting um, so from this sort of distance, which is about 20 centimeters from the device, my mouth's about 20 centimeters from the device, probably medium seems about right. But nice that you can change all this stuff while it's recording. So, you know, if you are in the middle of doing something and you see these levels are just going, going crazy, then you can set it to whatever you need it to be. So there we go. They are the main options on here. Other things just on the, uh, on the, on the device itself, I've got a track track mark button here. So if you're, if you're going through and you are recording something, so if I wanted to, if I knew it was something important, I could just put a track marker in there and we've got a little flag flashing. And of course you can jump to those really easily. Again, normal stuff for this type, this type of device. DPC is digital pitch control, I think. So if I'm playing something back, Okay, there we go. So that's the levels at the moment. It does tend to spot then I can go into digital pitch control. And you can you can just change the uh, speed of the playback uh, digitally so that it just runs through everything a little bit quicker. So it doesn't, you don't have to waste so much time listening to notes that you might have made. And uh, then you've got settings around playback to select a certain portion to play between. Um, so it just loops through a certain portion of the text. Down the bottom, go back three seconds, go forward ten seconds, or jump here. You can just jump through ten percent. So ten percent at a time using the forward button. So if you're playing it back and you go to jump here, go, go through 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, and etc. So nice and uh, simple to use. And yeah, just a great little device. I just love the simplicity of it. Love the uh, how, but without doubt, the best thing about this to, for me is the fact that you can just turn it on and bang, you're up and running and recording straight away. That's kind of important, I think, because there's no way I could unlock my phone, get into an app and start recording that quickly. You could do it quick, but not that quick. What this misses definitely is any kind of wireless connectivity. They so should have given this Bluetooth connectivity. Connecting to Bluetooth headphones would have been lovely on this. Connecting blue via Bluetooth or wireless to transfer files how much more sensible would that have been than having to use a USB port? Just getting a file, transferring a file across to a phone to send to somebody maybe, something like that, or just email from a phone. God, they missed a trick there, totally. It's, and it's a common thing that sort of companies like Sony do. They just sort of think, yeah, well, everyone will just use it plugged into a computer. No, people won't. Wireless should have been on here. Wireless or Bluetooth or something similar to allow transmission of the data that's on this device to a phone. So yeah, nice little device. This is the, saves the file down there. This is the uh, ICD UX570 Dictaphone. Lovely little device from Sony. Uh, if you've got any questions about this, let me know. I will answer those as soon as I can. As I mentioned, I will do a test, an audio test on this, but I'll do that in a separate video. So uh, watch out for that. Thanks for watching. See you soon.